Hello, everybody. This is Billy, the Crafty Floridian. Welcome to my channel. Um, I've been busy getting ready for um, our cruise to the Caribbean, and um, I have a few little things to talk to about about the cruise, and then I have some things to show you and discuss with you and all that good stuff. <laughs> but first of all, I'll go over the cruise things um, at the end. That way, if you finish looking at uh, my, I have a couple of, of finished objects and a new a new venture that I'm uh, starting um, <clears throat> and that I will tell you about if I remember everything. I found that my memory is not as good as it used to be, and I wondered why, and I have an answer for that. But I'll let that I'll let that stay until the end also. Okay. First of all, I have some finished objects that I've been working on. I've been watching a lot of um videos on sewing, uh crocheting, uh knitting, a lot of knitting stuff. And um but first of all, I think I'll show you what I have made. Moi. This is a little dress that I made. What am I? Um, wait a minute. Let me see if I can get it right. Here we go. I put a little stand-up collar on it, and it's, um, as you can see, has I got little sleeves on it, and it's um, the cats in the uh, library. And yeah, that's what it is. And I got slits up the side, and it's long. And I'm taking this on the cruise with me to wear as a daytime wear. It's the material's very, very light so that it won't be so, um, you know, it won't be so um, hot when I'm outside. So, yeah, so this is my uh, dress that I made. And then I have, um, I got, I needed something to go with black. So I have some black slacks and then I got a black sort of a camisole type uh, top. I got one in black and then a different type in pink. So I made this little jacket. Here, let's see that. Keep rolling on this something on my feet. So here's the material and it's just it's got the, I call it the baseball uh, with the curve, you know, and that's tied up. So it'll go on. It'll fit better when it's not, I don't have this dress on. But anyway, so this is, well, it'll fit better once I don't have this um, this thing on. And I'm the collar. They're very nice. See? So this is a, I put, a, did I just put one pocket? I just put one pocket on it. I guess, I don't know why I didn't do two, but I just put one pocket to hold my necks and stuff like that. So I made this to go with my, my black linen pants and a top for the cruise. How did I make it? It was just all just trial and error, I think. But I think it came out um, it came out very nice. I was very happy with it. And I think it'll look great with the slacks. And while I'm at it, I did I have been seeing all these videos on um T E M U T E M U. It's either T M U or Tim U. Anyway, I don't care how you, so I got a couple of, I didn't want to I get a lot of stuff, but I got this little dress, uh, it's a little daytime dress, it's like tea, tea party length, tea length, and uh, it's, you know, that uh, viscose, whatever it is, but it looks real nice. Look. Now, I have found with, fits, and it fits good, um, I have found that I had to order two sizes 
higher than what I normally wear, what I would normally wear from somebody else. Now, that's just the way I'm built. And then I got a longer piece to wear at night, which is this. And that pretty color and everything. So that's the front. It's long. It's sort of shaped where it's longer in the front and back than it is on the side. And then that's the back of it right there. So, yeah. So you can see when I held it up, you can see where it's longer in the front and back than it is on the side. So anyway, uh, it'll be easy packing, and it won't wrinkle or anything. And uh, so I'll give it a try, and um, as long as I don't wear it outside, because this material does not breathe. And I, uh, if you don't like cotton, wearing cotton. Because this is this is 100% cotton, and this is 100% cotton. So those are really the only two things that I made for the cruise, right? Except I was watching. I think I showed you. I can't remember if I did or not, but I was going through. I'm a little out of breath. Un momento, por favor. Anyway, I was going through videos, and I had all these zippers that I got from a, a box that went around, and uh, I saw how they made using the zippers, um, making uh, these little little pouches. So I made this one in red. And I, I did line this one, just some extra uh, fabric that I had in my scrap, um, you know, scrap uh, bucket. So I already got something in it. Oh, I got my jewelry. I'm going to keep in that. Uh, so that's what that's for. What is that? Oh, that's a piece of, piece of fuzz. Okay. So that's, that's that one. And that's. Yeah, the space, it's really hard at the beginning. And I, I use this tiny, tiny hook, like a two <laughs> or a hook. You, you see those hooks that come in kits when you're doing uh, frosting or something like that? Well, that's what I started out with, only because it's nice to steal and it's easier because you got to pull the, through these holes and you try to space it the best you can. Um, maybe sometimes, I mean, it, this one does have a do 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 a humpback, and I think I don't know if I got it a little bit too tight, but then I changed the hook after about three rounds, I think one, two, three, three or four rounds. Um, I went to a smaller hook and did that, and then I went to a larger hook. So um, I even had to put two together, you know, to kind of thin it out a little bit, and then I go back to a single crochet at the end for the bottom and then just do whatever you do to close it up that you would like. And then you have to uh, uh, sew this on around around the uh, zipper. Uh, yeah, so that's just figured it out on my own basically. So I did this one and then I did this one last night or yesterday, last night. It's a little straighter. It's not as bumpy as the other one. And, I mean, once you straighten it out, I mean, I think it'll straighten out on its own much better. And this is for a girlfriend of mine. And uh, I put a little lining in it. Um, but um, she loves dolphins, and I had this dolphin pen, so I decided to put that on there. So I have made about five of these and three have disappeared in the neighborhood if you know what I mean then I saw this little um, tutorial on this little now I don't know I think if you just put in um, 
crochet, uh, crochet with zipper or something like that in YouTube. I looked at like, I don't know, three or four of these. I didn't write down any particular person's name or anything like that. So um, I can't tell you who, who, who I got, you know, got these from. I can't even tell you who I got the next project from. Um, I was looking at this um, lady. She was, and it looked really weird. I said, well, I better, I better just watch this whole thing, you know, see what's going on. So she um, started putting it together, and it was a handbag. And it's like a Jacob's Ladders handbag. I mean, headband. And this is it. This is the Jacob's Ladder headband. And then... You put a button on the back and put the last loop of the ladder around here. Now, the one thing I did do different is that I sewed it into a point because when it's laying in the back, these pieces were sticking out. I didn't like that so much. So I, um, so. So there's the headband. And it's nice and warm. Now, this is made with acrylic. Um, this is um, wrap, uh, something wrap it yarn or, uh, I don't remember. I'm not as good as that as you all are. I just find something and I just work with it. So, and I had it sitting on the table next to where I work. So, I just did that. So I think it's kind of cute. But this is just, you know, you leave the loops and then you you put them inside each other until you get to the back. And then you put a button on the back. So, and then I said, well, I want to make one out of cotton. It's not particularly one of the best cottons, cotton that I really enjoy. But I said, well, okay, I'll make it out of, it was, I had it, I had it sitting on, you know, close to me. I didn't go looking for it. So I made it out of the comfy cotton. And so you see, can't see the pattern as well as, you know, as with the other ones. And blue, I'm not a blue, I don't like blue that much. I don't wear blue. But this is the blue one, and this is a cotton. It's a cotton, it fits nice. It's smaller than the other one, but it fits about the same. So, but... It's a very simple, simple pattern. I think you start out, or the way I start out, um, with 16 plus one or two or whatever. And you have, um, I think it's a crochet, double crochet. You, you count the, the, the three at the beginning. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. And then you chain 15 and then hook it into the next next one and crochet eight. So somehow it comes out right. But, um, and then you hook them all up as you go. So, I mean, when you finish. So I have it, this is the back with a, a blue, um, a blue button. So I made one in cotton. And I can almost see where this one has stretched a little bit. And you can determine when you get to the last one if you want to make that longer or shorter. Or did I not put the second row? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Because you, you go back over it again after the second line. So, but yeah, it's real easy to do. And you can, you can um, find that on YouTube. So I made these two just... And, you know, I made this, and that's going to my girlfriend, Deb, and that's this is going to Deb also. And I have other whips. I've got um, I've got the um, a blanket that I'm, I'm knitting. I've got a um, oh, what do you call it? Why is it that this one word is very hard for me to remember? It's going to come to me in a minute. Anyway, another project I'm working on. So I got a lot of projects around. And um, then I was watching uh, Chevy Rail the other night 
Friday night I, or Saturday morning having breakfast or whatever it was, and I noticed that she um, is she's put together a cow using um, using a either a a pattern that you've had for a long time or a stash that you've had a, that you you know uh, have assigned to a pattern that you haven't started you you wanted to work on and so on and so forth. So I said, geez, maybe I will, I'll enter that um, because I have a pattern that I printed out. I went back and I got it off of Ravelry and I got it in 2019 or 2020. So three, three, at least over three years ago. And then I got this yarn from an Advent calendars that I had three, three years ago. And I had been wanting to to make this scarf from the Advent uh, yarn that I got. And I kept it in the cabinet right behind me where that thing is. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> where is it? Oh, it's right here. So I was going to do something with... Um, with my friend Laura from Mad Mimi. But I said, well, you know, I'd like to do that, you know, continue on with that, and then I'll do something else. I'll get this other yarn that I had forever in a day and use that for Mad Mimi's project. So it's, um, it's Helene K-O-K. -K. That's her last name, K-O-K. -K. And it's, it's actually for um, Advent Calendar 2020. That's that's the the date that she has on this. And um, I know I don't have a color, but here's the that's the shawl up there. So each each one of these is a different a different um, knitted uh, pattern. Or knitted stitches and um, different colors. So we use all all of these colors. So I think it's going to be fun. I think. It's, and then of course I have a main color, and the main color is this, and it came with the advent calendar. So that's the main color of my advent calendar, and that's and um, it was a paid for pattern, and I've just been hanging on to it for well for three years. So I did start it and I'm right here. <laughs> here I am. This is as far as I got and this is the moss stitch here that I'm working on now. And I'm on the pink. I've done the main color now I'm on the pink. I've just been picking up doing a few, you know, a little bit here and there. So I might work on it a little bit later. So that's that is my cow that I'm working on with Chevy. And it's, um, it's um, okay, let me make sure I get this right. Hashtag DS, which is something deep stash, deep stash, I think it meant, DS. Um, okay, hashtag DSKAL. I'm sure that's it. Let me let me write it out. It's easier that way for me. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag D S K A L twenty three. That's right. I forgot the twenty three on the back. So it's hashtag D S K A L twenty three on Instagram, and that's where people are posting their pictures. Um, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I did post to Instagram, but I didn't post to that hashtag thing. I think I figured out what I did wrong. And so I'm going to wait till I get that a little bit, you know, another couple of rows or two before I post it again. And then I was going to show you, this is the blanket that I've been working on. I've been knitting, and this is the, um, it's called Fall Cuddler Chunky Blanket Easy Knitting Pattern. 
and it is very, it's easy. It's like my go-to project. So I am in the last row of the of this pattern right here. And then we go to another pattern after this. Now, this, you're going to look at this down here and say, geez, that doesn't look right. Well, that's all right. It looks right now. It looks right to me anyway. So that's that's where we are. I got on the wrong side, but you know what? I said, I've started this 1,500 times, so um, I'm not going to start it again. And I like it the way it is, so we're moving on. Maybe we're moving on. So, yeah. So you could stop. I'm sure you could stop wherever you want. Um, I'm just making this the size for the, um, you know, for for um, Boggy Creek, I think it is. Yeah. So, anyway, so I've made a lot of progress on this, I think. I'm still not, still not even with Lala yet, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. What else do I have in here? Do I have something else? Oh, yeah. I started, oh, I don't know if I showed you this or not, but. I started this pattern. Okay, here we go. Okay, this pattern here is for a shawl. Very simple. Let me see if I've got the um I got the pattern in here. I probably don't. I don't. It's um Okay, let me think. Is it a Stephen King? I, I Stephen King. I don't remember. I'm sorry I even brought it out. But anyway, I'm working on this. This is um, so soft and cushy. Okay. All right. So those are some of the projects I've been working on. And um, I have more. But I'm not going to show them to you. Okay. So that's really all the projects that I have. I think my neighbor's banging on the on the on the wall for me to shut up. Cause I think her bed is up in this, against this wall. But y'all can hear me, right? I don't care. It's not like it's too late. All right. Well, it is 11:41, but you know, get on with it. Okay. So that's really all that I have that I've been working on. Uh, I've been working on doing stuff for the uh, cruise, and uh, you know trying to get and I screwed up again but you know what it is what it is so we just move right on now hopefully I'd like to you all can go if you want to or you can stick around but I wanted to talk to hookers on the high seas that are going on the cruise and the first thing I want to remind everybody to please be sure that you have gone to your hub um, the carnival hub and you have registered, and um, let me show you. Where am I? It says Carnival Hub. And you go in there. Uh, I think I went in the wrong hub. Ooh, excuse me, it scared me. Let's turn this down. Okay. All right, so we go into the Carnival Carnival. And it says, Countdown to Carnival Celebration. We have five days and 12 hours and 17 minutes. This time next week, we will be at sea. And then in the morning, we'll be parking at Amber Cove in the Dominion Republic. So, and they tell you what, what that you should bring documents, what documents you should bring, uh, shore excursions beverage packages, spa and salon, dream studio, internet plans, gift ideas, specialty dining reservations. Now, if, and I'm going to say this very sincerely, be sure that you have done your registration. It is very, very important because you're going to have to do it. So you might as well do it ahead of time. They'll tell you what you should have and not have and so on and so forth. Also, um, be sure that you read what you should bring, what you shouldn't bring, and 
in, which is very important. And they have a list of things that they permit and stuff that they don't permit. Um, like, do not bring a hair dryer. There is a hair dryer in every room. Um, things that will help you uh, stay organized in the in the cabin because they're very small. And um, so you want to bring things that's going to help you stay organized in the cabin. I was just looking, and this little flamingo keeps bouncing. I wonder what it looks. Must be with me moving on the table, and it was just going up. And, what is that moving over there? I thought it was a bug or something. It's my little flamingo. Okay, so make sure that you have all of that done. The other thing, if there's in some of the restaurants, they're specially dining, like the steakhouse or the the uh, what is it like the Japanese um, restaurant or I just can't forget. The it is named, sorry, anyway, or, you know, some of the ones that are not free. If you would like, it would probably be better to go ahead and make your reservations now. Um, it will probably be easier. I've noticed that some of the hours are completely full, so you want to get in. In fact, um, now, Nancy and I are going to go to the steakhouse on Wednesday at 7, 7 or 7.30. And once you make your reservations on your hub, you go in and now it says uh, booking details. And your booking details is going to give you, um, hi, Billy, your cruise starts in six days. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then you go, let's see. You'll go in and it says, um, view details, I think. No, that's the wrong details. Hey, you know, we, we do the best we can. Open your planner. There you go. Sorry. Your planner, five days, 20 hours, 13 minutes. Your, uh, before you go, uh, may my to-do list. And it tells you about the registration. They mark it through if you finished. Uh, review online check-in. That's all that you that you need to do. You print documents. You have to print. That's it. Very important. Print your documents for your um, tags. Uh, print um, your um, boarding pass. So I've got all that done for for myself. I wonder where they are. Oh, that's good. Well, here's it's what the, this is what the the documents look like. They go into your little plastic thing, you know, to go on your your luggage. Two pieces of luggage can be checked in. The rest you have to carry on. Okay. I don't know where my tags and stuff are. Maybe I put them in here. Oh yeah. So I got these tags, and these will go on my my luggage. Okay, and you have to sign or put your name there, and then it has your name up here. I went ahead and put it down here too. Gives you there on a deck eleven. Our room number is eleven four zero six, aft P. Okay, which means it's the aft of the ship on the port side. Does that make sense? I guess it does. But anyway, these are our little things. And then we have boarding passes, which you print out. I hope I have those. Yes, here we go. Oh, I got my birth certificate from New Jersey, where I was born. And then this is my our boarding passes. Final boarding is at 3 o'clock. After that, you don't make it. You don't get on very strict about that okay you can um, you may go to your cabin um, like after 1 30 to drop off your stuff but not to um, but not to go in permanently because they're still you know getting it ready and everything 
so you could drop your stuff off and then if you got jewelry in your carry on you could put it in the safe uh, put your bags or whatever on the bed or whatever and then go on your merry way uh, but make sure you have all that printed out your boarding passes your um, luggage tags and then they give you an itinerary which is Sunday you're in Miami activity zero <laughs> The second day, fun day at sea, activities, zero. <laughs> Don't you like that? Zero, baby. And then day three, we're in Amber Cove, and activities, zero. Yep, zero. That's Tuesday. And then the fourth day is San Juan, and we have an activity. That's a steakhouse. And then St. Thomas on Thursday, and that's activity zero. Fun day at the sea for day six, and we have purchased a lunch at 145 in the Japanese uh, kind of steakhouse, or Japanese uh, food restaurant. Seventh day, which is Saturday, we're at sea, no activities. So that's good. And then, of course, Sunday is when we return early in the morning. Um, so you want to keep all that. You can keep all your activities right here on your on your phone. Uh, let me see what else. Um, there is, and I don't know if anybody's interested or not, but this is why I'm I'm doing this video. There is an excursion at Amber Cove. It's called the Private Van, Your Day, Your Way. It's $299.99, which is $300, okay? It's for 10 people, but then when I opened it up, it said it could be more. So I figured 10 into 300 is $30. Now, you can't get a better deal than that, $30. It's for four hours, and um, I guess you can work out the time, um, because we're going to be in Amber Cove from 7 in the morning to 4 o'clock that afternoon. Now, this departure time on this that shows up on the phone is 8.30 a.m. And then it returns, you know, around 12.30 or so. Um, and he, they will, uh, he will uh, have a snack and a bottle of water. But we could plan the day, like... Um, we could talk to the driver and he can, he'll tell, give us the history and everything. And then we can ask him where is a good place to stop for lunch. And one of the place, uh, one of the, I read all of the reviews on this. And like one guy, he asked for lunch on the beach and they went to the Swank VIP bar and he said the food was delicious. So that's, that's one, one, um, one thing that we could talk about. The other is going to Umbrella Street. I think there's like umbrellas all above them. And then there's the Pink Street. There's the Rum Factory, the Chocolate Factory. And then there's um, Umbrella Pink. Oh. Anyway, look up. I went and looked up um, Amber Cove and what they have and stuff. But, you know, this is just. I know that I definitely would love to do, see Pink Street, where everything's pink, and whatever, and the marketplace. Now, I know that when you get off the ship, this is what they said, when you get off the ship, at the end of the pier, there's all kinds of, of, uh, of um, a marketplace, you know, where there's lots of little vendors there and stuff. So, I mean, that's something that you could stop at on the way back or whatever. But we can always ask. But... If you are interested in doing this excursion at Amber Cove and you don't have anything else to plan, it is a snack only bottle, easy activity level. <laughs> easy baby, easy activity level. If you want to walk around, you can walk around when he stops or whoever, whatever anybody wants to do. Um, but it is supposed to be an easy activity. Well, you, know, you walk on the 
on the van and you get off the van. If you don't want to get off the van, then you sit on, sit on the van. Um, and then we could get, it's supposed to provide a map so that we can look at the different things that we might want to see and then or else we could take his recommendations. Some places to go, some places that, you know, is out of the norm. That's not part of the regular old sightseeing tours. So we can always discuss that. But I need at least 10 people. And if you're interested, uh, would you send me an email at b mills 213 at AOL.com? And I'll put it down in the description. If you would, please, that would be wonderful. Um, I had looked at this, and then when I went back, and looked at it again, it was gone. And then it came back again. So I guess they're, the bands, you know, they got more than one band. Maybe they're getting two bands. I don't know. So um, if you would, if you're interested, please send me an email. The only problem that I have is that it only takes one person to go in and, um, and um, to, to register for this. I particularly don't have three hundred dollars extra, you know, to have it to hold it until I collect the money from everybody. So, uh, if anyone it would like to be the one to um, to register for this, and then we'll collect the money and give it to you. Um, and then just remember that if we get the van, then just bring a little extra along for a tip, uh, and and then we'll tip you tip as you. Each person will tip the van as you so uh, desire, the amount that you desire. I think that's only fair. So um, at least that's what we did once before when I took a little trip like this on one of the islands. Um, but please email me. Let me know if you're interested. And let's see if we can get 10 people together. I'd like to get it booked before we get on the ship because this price after this might be $400. So we want to want to uh, get it at the amount, uh, the least amount that we can, that we can, uh, can reserve it for. So that's what I need from you guys. If you're interested in this Amber Cove, um, it would be great. And then, and then you go on to San Juan, uh, which I probably won't get off at San Juan, but I am going to get off at St. Thomas because I want, at San Juan, I'll let you you know, you read up on that, but St. Thomas, which is Thursday, um, they do have a place called the Fabric Store. If anybody is interested or would like to go with me or whatever, I'm not sure about it yet, but, you know, we'll, we'll do it. But this is what they're famous for, leather sandals, jewelry, that's, we want to do the, the you know, the jewelry, you, you, do, you should do a lot of... Um, if you're looking at jewelry, look at different places. Just don't buy the first thing. They're really, really good on tanzanite. Uh, one time we were there, my friend brought a tan tanzanite ring, and it was beautiful, just beautiful. To the day, to this day, she still wears it. And then, uh, of course, rum is their other. Sea glass is another. That they're good cookbooks, hand handcrafts from in. Dangerous, indigent, and dangerous materials. Did y'all get that? I just can't roll that out. And the local art. These are things that are uh, that they're kind of known for. Um, I guess the place that people go is, is the harbor in Charlotte, Amelia. Yeah, and there's local malls, vendor vendors plaza. But you got to remember uh, uh, outdoor marketplace and vendors. Um, and that's at that harbor in Charlotte, Amelia. But I think, you know, that they have all these little streets and all these little shops and stuff, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've been to St. Thomas. But um, anyway, I'm definitely going to do that. And they said to please take cash. There's a lot of debit and credit cards that they do not take. Um, but cash, of course, if you want to, but if you want to buy, I think jewelry is also, um, listed for St. 
San Juan, is it, I think. I didn't do that much for San Juan. San Juan is from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. that you'll be there. Uh, that's where they have the fort and all that stuff. Uh, you can do you can do a tour of the fort on the outside. It costs you nothing, but if you want to go inside, I think there's a charge for it. There's all kinds, but you'll learn all this from from your um, whatever you got planned. So that's really all I want to see. So if you want to go on this excursion, let me know and see if we can get ten people together and one person to put to um, sort of pay for it, and then we'll uh, reimburse you each person. I will personally collect the money and make sure that you get it. So um, so I think that would be a lot of fun to do. Um, if you're interested, you can look it up, and it's called Private Van, Your Day, Your Way, and that's at Amber Cove. Um, I've never been to Amber Cove, but I think that would be a nice ride. We don't even have to stop. We could just ride around all that for four hours. Who knows? And stop and do some, some, uh, you know, some videoing and stuff like that. Okay, so that's really all I have to. Um, uh, let me make sure I got everything straight on that. Eight thirty a.m. More than 10, 10, 10 tickets available. That's what's written here. So I don't know. All times are stuff that you change. You will view. You will view available times and select the time when you add this item to your cart. Okay. Um, if you want want to create your best day in Amber Cove and have all the flexibility, go to a beach, eat the best food, or simply drive around. Drive around for you. Experience the port from the comfort of your own private vehicle with your expert local host. We will provide a map, perfect day or just go with the flow and your local expert guide. We'll see. But that was one of the things I really wanted to bring up. So if we could get 10 people and someone to to pay up front so that we can gather the money together, I think that would be great. That would be wonderful. And we really, really, really would appreciate it. I have one other thing that I... I think I've read this before. You might have heard this before. But for this cruise that's coming up, I thought it was apropos. And um, I don't know where this came from or anything, but I'll read it. And then, and then I'll shut up. Okay, here we go. People come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. When you, when you know which one it is for a person, you will know what to do for that person. When someone in your life, when someone is in your life for a reason, it is usually to meet a need you have expressed. You have come to assist through you through a, they have come to assist you through a, dif, a difficult to provide you with guidance and support to aid you physically, emotionally, or spiritually. They may seem like a god skin, a godsend, and they are. They are there for the reason you need them to be. Then, without any wrongdoing on your part, or at an inconvenient time, this person will say or do something to bring the relationship to an end. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they walk away. Sometimes they act up and force you to take a stand. What we must realize is that our need has been met. Our desire fulfilled. Their work is done. The prayer you sent up has been answered. And now it's time to move on. Some people come into your life for a season because your turn has come to share grow or learn. They bring you an experience of peace or make you laugh. They may teach you something you have never done. They usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it, it is real, but only for a season. Lifetime relationships teach you lifetime lessons. 
things you must build upon in order to have a solid emotional foundation. Your job is to accept the lesson, love the person, and put what you have learned to use in all other relationships and areas of your life. It is said that love is blind, but friendship is clairvoyant. Thank you for being a part of my life.